Purchasing solar panels for your home can be an exciting and simple process. However, because the process of getting a solar quote and signing up for solar can be so simple, it often means that it's very simple to ruin as well without even realizing it. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the seven things that you must know before getting a solar system installed on your roof, because if you do not know these things, you might end up going through the process blindly and not know what you're investing into. And the best part about all these things is that they're super easy to understand as long as you watch the video until the end. So the first and probably most important thing that you must know before getting a solar system installed on your roof is that if you're gonna sign up for solar, the most important thing you must do is ensure that you're taking ownership of that system. You see, in this industry, there are two main ways that systems are offered. Either you can purchase a system or lease a system. 15 years ago, when the residential solar industry was in its early stages, banks and lenders were unable to finance solar systems due to their high costs at the time. So to address this issue, certain solar companies offered what are called PPAs, also known as power purchase agreements or leases. It allowed customers to make monthly payments that would increase slightly each year and still benefit from the savings due to the solar power being cheaper than fossil fuel power in states like California, which has rates high as 37 cents per kilowatt hour. As a result, PPAs became wildly popular in states such as California and Florida. Unfortunately, many customers were unaware of the drawbacks of these systems, which include but are not limited to the lack of building equity, forfeiting your 30% tax credit, and getting stuck into a very long leasing agreement. To ensure the best outcome when investing in a solar, it's essential that you purchase the system and take advantage of all the benefits that come with ownership. The second thing that you must know before getting a solar system installed in your roof is that the tax credit does not apply to everybody and it's important to know what qualifies and who qualifies for the tax credit. As with a lot of things regarding the IRS, it can be difficult to understand how the solar federal tax credit works and I'm here to clear it up. In the summer of 2022, Congress extended the solar federal tax credit for the next 10 years at the rate of 30%. What that means is the government will give back to you in the form of a tax credit 30% of your overall project cost. Again, this is gonna be a tax credit, not a tax rebate. Meaning, if you do not incur a tax liability, you will likely not get any money back in the form of a credit. Thankfully, you will have a period of five years to claim that tax credit, meaning that if your tax liability does not exceed what your solar tax credit could be in a single year, you would have four more years to claim the credit. The tax credit amount is calculated by taking your overall project cost for your solar system and multiplying it by 30%. This cost could include a battery backup if that is something you choose to do. So guys, it's important and essential to understand exactly how the tax credit works so that when it comes to file for your tax credit, you know what you're getting back and you do not have any misinterpretations for how this thing works. If you'd like to further understand this topic and, and further understand how the tax credit works, I do recommend checking out my video where I went over the 2023 Solar Federal Tax Credit, where I went more into depth on this topic and how the tax credit works. The third thing that you must understand when investing into a solar PV system for your home is that it is your energy consumption that, that determines how many panels are quoted for your home. There is a misconception in the solar industry that it is the size of your home or roof space available that determines how many panels you should get for your home when that's not the case. Solar designers design systems by first taking a look at your energy consumption and then using a design software which tells them how many panels you would need to offset that home's energy usage with solar production. You do have the option to offset more than 100% of your home's energy usage, though that is quite unnecessary. It will also be the number of panels which primarily dictates the cost of the system, which is why I told you guys before that it is impossible to give a ballpark estimate for the price of a system without first taking a look at the home's electrical usage. And as always guys, if you are in the process for shopping for different solar options for your home and you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a price quote and you just wanna get a comparison just to see that you're getting a good deal, feel free to chat with us on our short Zoom call by using the link below this video and we'd be happy to provide you with some pricing. The fourth thing that you must know before getting solar in your home is the difference between a string inverter and a micro inverter and which one is the better option. Solar inverters are often the most overlooked component within a solar system. It is the inverter's job to convert the DC power that the panels off put into usable AC power that can be used in the home. And with that being said, the two main inverter solutions which are offered in today's market are string inverters and micro inverters. String inverters, which are the older version of the two, are composed of one individual inverter 
usually at ground level near the main service panel. The string inverter will capture all of the DC power that the solar array outputs and convert it into usable AC power, which is sent into the breaker box where it can be dispersed throughout the home. While this is a great option, unfortunately, the industry experienced reliability concerns with these systems, being that string inverters were faulting, causing the entire system to not be able to produce power until swapped out. Therefore, microinverters were introduced to counteract this issue, with providing each individual panel with its own inverter which would lie underneath each module, meaning that if one inverter would happen to fault, only that panel would not be producing power until the inverter was swapped out. The microinverter will come in at a slightly higher cost. However, for many homeowners, it is worth the extra investment to opt for these systems. And really quickly, guys, please make sure to like the video and also consider subscribing to the channel. We put out videos like these every single week, and we're just trying to help people be more informed when going solar. The fifth thing that you must understand when investing into a solar system for your home is that there are two primary ways that you can buy systems, either with cash or with a loan. Let's briefly go over the difference between how the two work. When purchasing a system cash, you'll typically require to put a down payment down, typically anywhere from $2,000 to 10% of the project cost. The remaining payments would be due typically 30 days before install and then the day prior to install. However, when purchasing a system with a loan, most programs that you will see will be $0 down, followed by levelized monthly payments through the duration of the loan. Now, being that solar companies partner with lenders to offer finance you have to understand that with most loans, there will be slight banking fees added on to the cost of these systems, meaning that you are paying a premium to receive financing. However, for most people, they do choose financing in order to get the immediate monthly savings without having to cut into their savings. Financing will be all based upon approval, and in today's market, a 650 credit score is a minimum to get approved from lenders. The sixth thing that you must understand before investing into a solar system for your home is that net metering will not be the same for every homeowner. And briefly, for those of you guys who are not familiar with what net metering means, Net metering is the process of your utility company taking the excess power that your solar panels produce and sending it back onto the grid. Now, net metering plans and offers are completely dependent upon the utility provider and what your specific utility company will offer you and what matters. You do have the ability to switch between utility providers, which should give you some flexibility to switch if the one that you're with does not offer a competitive buyback. Now, what buyback means is that certain utility companies will purchase power back at what is called retail rates, meaning they'll purchase power back from the homeowners at the same rate at which they charge homeowners for power. Now, for other people, that is not the case, and utility companies offer what is called a wholesale rate, meaning that they don't offer the full buyback for people looking to use the net metering program. In these instances, you usually have to undersize solar systems so that the home is not sending a lot of excess power back to the grid or pair the home with backup battery so the home is not using the grid as a battery. Therefore, make sure that when you speak with your solar consultant, he or she understands the utility agreement you're offered and properly designs the system to best suit your needs. Last but not least, the seventh thing that you must know before investing into a solar PV system for your home is that it is not a short process. It can be a long process. Guys, at the end of the day, going solar is ultimately a construction project, and it's a process that should not be rushed. I mean, from the time that you sign up, there will be a site survey at your house, there will be permits which are pulled on your behalf, there's HOA approval that must be done. It's overall a very long process, and again, not something that should be rushed. Therefore, it's important that you understand that this is something that you should not expect being on your roof immediately after you sign up. The average solar install typically takes between 45 and 75 days, simply dependent upon what time of the year you sign up and where you're located within the market. Additionally, after your system is installed on your roof, it is not turned on that day. The county must approve that the system passes local code and the utility company must come out and approve the system for net metering. These are two inspections that will be scheduled for you with your solar company, but again, can take anywhere from two to four weeks after that system is on your roof. At the end of the day, solar is not something that is nor should be rushed, and it's important that you know that before you sign up so you don't have false expectations going into the project. And guys, again, please make sure to like the video and consider subscribing to their channel. And if you're looking at Going Solar, make sure to check us out on our website. And if you wanna look further into Going Solar, make sure that you check out my video going over the 10 mistakes that first-time solar homeowners make when going solar, which should be right here somewhere on the video. Again, my name is Jack and I will see you guys next time.